Welcome back to Educator.com. We're now going to take a look at a term that has become very popular, and it is something you need to consider when you're creating websites. It was created by Ethan Marcotte, or Marcotte, I'm not exactly sure which is correct, but he coined this phrase, responsive web design. So I'm starting this section of lessons with his specific website. And basically, the idea is we're using so many devices now to view websites that it's very difficult to determine specifically what size browser is viewing our website. And we must be able to produce websites that can respond and look okay across multiple devices. So the idea here is there's tablets, there are different e-readers, there are many different sizes of tablets now. There are also smartphones, and those are small, they're big. It's every different size. And then we've got the huge monitors as well. So we can't really determine, or it's much harder to determine, what width you should make your web page. So as a part of that process, the idea is to allow your website to respond, become a responsive website to whatever the device is. So in other words, it would adjust accordingly. And the concept is a great one, but it's a bit harder to implement. And I want to show you within this group of lessons some of the features that Dreamweaver can assist you with. Now, responsive web design is an entire full course on its own. So we're only going to touch the surface of this topic, but I do want to show you what Dreamweaver can do for you and also give you enough information about this topic to be able to explore it a little bit further on your own. So let's look at some examples. I'm going to make my browser a little bit smaller and notice this website. You can kind of see how it's changing as I'm changing the side of the browser. It even gets teeny tiny. So it's, let me grab that once more and we'll make it a little bit bigger. Can you see how even the images are growing depending upon the width of the device looking at it? Now I'll do that same thing with this website. This was the example website that Ethan created to show this concept. And even images can become responsive. You can see that's exactly what's happening here. As I make the browser smaller, you can see how the page is adjusting accordingly and the images themselves are getting smaller. Let me get a hold of that there. There we go. See how the images are getting smaller. They're growing based on the size of the browser. I have a couple of other examples of this. So these are created by Ethan, and there's some good examples of what I'm talking about or specifically what he was talking about when he coined the phrase. Let's take a couple of other examples. So here's another one. This website, can you see how these kind of jump all of a sudden? And now my image is getting smaller and smaller, and notice how that ribbon the orange or red ribbon is changing a little bit. So I'll open that back up. Now this is an Adobe website to reference this and this is called Inspire. And as I make this one smaller, you can see that image didn't change until I got to about right here. So there's a set size that as soon as the browser gets to that size, it changes the size of the actual page. So at full width, you would never know that. Now let's take a look at what we're going to research a little bit further, and that is our Wanderlust Travel website. Now this is just a base page. It's a not an actual page with true content for the website, but it is still a responsive design. Watch what happens as I make it smaller. You can see out at this width, my image is on the right hand side. This blue box represents where an image is going to be placed. So I call that my placeholder image. Now that I've moved it a little bit smaller, 
you can see that image is no longer on the right. It moves underneath. And I'll scroll back up again. Notice my upper navigation area is changing also automatically based on the browser size. And as soon as I get to this width, you can see my buttons become more usable on a phone size device and my image completely disappears from the page. Now this lower portion is a bit odd right now. This is actually designed to go to this width in terms of getting small. So I don't have my style sheet set up to go all the way to zero. So that's why it started looking a little bit odd when it got really narrow. Nobody's going to be looking at it quite that narrow. But that is a responsive web design. You can see here's the tablet size. Basically, this is the phone size. Here's the tablet size. And here is the desktop size. So that's an idea of what we're going to be doing. Now, I could get really deep into this topic, as I mentioned. What I'm going to try and do is kind of give you a starting point for how to create your responsive design using Dreamweaver. So it kind of comes down to a phone size, a tablet size, and a desktop size. And I didn't go quite as far as making the images responsive. That would be a responsive web design course. But I wanted to give you a taste of this and also show you some examples so you can explore this concept a little bit further on your own. I also want to give you a starting point in Dreamweaver because you look at this and say, that's great, wonderful. How do I even begin to create this type of website? And that's what this group of lessons is all about, to assist you with getting over that starting point. So that is responsive web design, and we're going to take a look at how we can work with that within Dreamweaver.